If I had a million dollars, if I had a million dollars, I'd travel the world. I would go to the highest mountain. I would swim the deepest sea. I would probably buy a lot of clothes because I love clothes. More than anything, though, I would want to visit Ireland. I want to see the rolling hills and the green, green grass that everyone talks about. When I think of Ireland, I think of where my family came from many years ago. I am almost all Irish, and I would love to see my family over in Ireland. If I had a million dollars, I would buy a Mustang or a Pontiac Sunbird car. I would buy a nice house with a big backyard and an outdoor and indoor pool. I would love to take my family wherever they wanted to go. I would buy them wonderful presents too. However, I know that money does not buy happiness. It does not buy you friends or family. It may bring some happiness only for the moment, but in the long run, your family is what will be there for you if you love them and are there for them. If I had to pick between a million dollars and my family, I would pick my family. The million dollars is a nice dream. If that dream ever comes true and I do get a lot of money, I hope I would use it wisely. A picnic. What a great day for a picnic! We're not only having a picnic; we're having a big bike ride too. We did this last year with a lot of friends. Also, it was really fun. We meet quite early in the morning in a pretty little town. The town is where the Niagara River flows into Lake Ontario in Canada. The town's name is Niagara on the Lake. Then all of the people, fifty or more, get on their bikes or rollerblades. We go on a bike path beside the river. The path we take is about eleven kilometers or six miles long. There are a lot of people using the path too. We usually stop for an ice cream treat near the end or where we turn around to go back to our cars. It is just before the park where we will have our picnic, and a steep hill. Many of the men and boys go up the hill. Most of the women and children go back to their cars. The ride takes about two hours plus whatever time we take at the ice cream store. After the ride is finished, we go to the park. We have a delicious potluck lunch. Potluck means everyone brings some food to share with the others. We eat, rest, talk, and laugh. After we've cleaned up, some of us climb the tower that is there, remembering a war at that place and its general. It is a steep climb, over one hundred steps. We usually end the day with a fun game of baseball or soccer. Finally, we pack up our stuff, tired and dirty. We head for home with good memories swimming in our heads. The wedding. We went into the church and sat down. There were pretty flowers at the front. There was beautiful organ music playing. The church was full of people dressed up nicely. Everyone was waiting to see the beautiful bride walk up the aisle. A hush, an intake of breath. There she was. Oh, she was so beautiful. She had a lovely long white dress. With pretty lace and beads, her hair was swept up off from her face. There were curls flowing down her back. Instead of a veil, she had little flowers in her hair. Her bouquet of tiny flowers was very, very pretty. Her dad looked very proud of her. He looked just a little sad too. At the front of the church, the groom stood waiting. He had a beautiful, tender smile on his face. He took his bride's hand as her dad left her there. They smiled at each other. The minister read, 
prayed and offered some words of advice to the lovely couple. Someone sang a pretty song. The groom slipped the simple wedding band on the bride's finger. She struggled a little to put a band on his finger. Pretty soon, the minister said they were now husband and wife. They kissed. We all stood as they walked down the aisle to live the rest of their lives together as Mr. and Mrs. We cried. Visiting the Zoo When I was a kid, I always enjoyed visiting the zoo. My family lived far away from the zoo, so we didn't go there very often. But whenever we went to the zoo, I always had a fun and interesting time. Some of the animals were very large. Of course, the elephants were huge, and they had such an unusual appearance. With their big ears and their long trunk and tusks. The giraffes were very tall, with long necks that reached high into the trees. Some of my favorite animals were big cats. The lions looked very powerful, with their big teeth and paws. The tigers were just as big and strong, with yellow and black stripes. But the bears were even larger than these cats. The polar bears, with their bright white fur, like to swim through the water. The animals from Australia seemed very unusual. The kangaroos, with their strong legs and long tail, could jump great distances across the ground. The baby kangaroo could go inside its mother's pouch. Another Australian animal, the koala bear, crawled slowly in the trees where it ate leaves. In many ways, they reminded me of people. Some of the monkeys were very small. They could use their arms, legs, and tail to swing through the trees. Some of the apes were very large. The gorilla was the largest of all. Sometimes a big gorilla would stand up and pound his fists on his chest. To see all the animals at the zoo took almost a whole day. By the end of the day, I was very tired from walking around, but I was also very happy to see all the amazing animals from places around the world. The Dentist Appointment My dentist called my house the other day. He told me I needed my teeth cleaned. I set up an appointment to see him on Saturday, June the 10th. When I got to my dentist's office, I had to sit in the waiting room. There were other people ahead of me. They finally called my name. I went into his room and sat down on a big blue chair. They leaned it back. A bright light was turned on. It hurt my eyes, so I closed them. My dentist asked me to open my mouth. I did. I thought my mouth was very big, but he told me to open it even wider. Soon he began poking around to see if I had any cavities. He flossed my teeth and put fluoride around my teeth too. The fluoride tasted like bubblegum. I had to spit into a dish-like bowl. It squirted out water. My dentist kept asking me questions. I couldn't answer because there were weird tools in my mouth. When I tried answering back, he seemed to understand though. His helper came into the room. She asked me to open my mouth again. I had to clamp down on something that felt like rubber. She put a big camera-type machine right next to my cheek. She did this on the other side of my face as well. They took two pictures of my teeth. It was really cool. The dentist told me my teeth were perfect. I didn't have any problems. I could go home. See you next year, he said. Daydream Little Annie was very bored one lazy afternoon. She had nothing to do. She had already played with her brothers in the sandbox and had tea with them and her dollies, too. She had baked chocolate chip cookies with her mom and even tasted one. They were very good, she thought. Now Annie was trying to figure out what else she could do to pass the day away. 
Little Annie decided that she would go to her favorite spot in the world, the green grassy field full of daisies beneath the great oak tree. She took a red and white blanket with her. She laid it down on the ground, and then she lay down on it. She lay there looking at the clouds, fluffy and white. She saw bunnies, huge gray elephants, and scary-looking crocodiles. Soon, little Annie was drifting in and out of clouds and reality. The clouds started dancing with her, begging her to come and play. She got up from her blanket and joined the clouds. They flew over rooftops of all of the village people, swam with the fish in the lake, and said hello to all of the birds that they passed by. Little Annie was having so much fun. The clouds had formed into a chariot, so little Annie could drive if she wanted to. She drove over a rainbow that was bright in the sky. Then she shot through the branches of her friend's spruce tree. Annie suddenly came to a stop. Hearing someone call her name, Annie looked around. She blinked once, twice, and finally everything came into focus. Her brother was tugging at her leg, wondering why she was staring into outer space with a big grin on her face. Oh, little Annie said, not really knowing that she had been sitting there. All along, my friend in the next office. When I started my job a year ago at the university, I did not know my way around. I did not know where to find anything. I had a million questions. But Diane in the next office took me on a tour, showing me the places to eat, the library, the lecture rooms, where to get a picture ID card, how to get from one building to another. When I had a question, I asked Diane how to use the telephone, where to make copies, where to print with my computer, the location of my mailbox. She teaches as I do. We both spend a lot of time helping students and answering their questions. She giggles a lot. I hear her laugh with her students. Sometimes she asks my advice about her work or about a problem, and I ask her advice. Sometimes she comes into my office and says, "I am really angry. Can I whine to you?" Then she talks about a problem, and I listen. And then she returns cheerfully to her office. Sometimes I go into her office and say, "I'm upset about something that happened. Can I come in for a minute?" Then I grumble to her, and she listens. And then I go back cheerfully to my office. Each of us feels better when we have shared our problems. Then they are no longer problems. Diane is shy in a group of people. She is quiet and does not start a conversation. Everyone around her talks, and she listens. We all sit in the staff room and eat microwaved popcorn and drink tea and talk. We start to relax for the weekend and talk about our plans. She is a good friend. She helps my students when I am not there. She wishes me good luck when I go to a lecture. I am very glad that she can be my friend in the office beside mine. The musician. There once was a little girl named Rain Angel. She loved to sit at the piano and play. Rain Angel was a very gifted girl. She had a voice that gave people shivers, and she loved to sing. As Rain got older, she continued to love music. Rain became involved in the choirs and bands at her high school. She loved performing in front of people. She couldn't help but feel the sense of power she had when she was up on stage, and there was always loud clapping when she finished a song. Rain soon went out on her own. And looked for someone that could help her become famous. Rain wanted to share her talent with the world. She felt that her special talent for music helped people feel good. Rain went out into the big world, and she did very well. She was always performing her best, and someone finally noticed her. Her new agent helped her to make her first album. Rain became famous because she never quit trying. Rain loved her new way of life. She continued singing and playing her piano.
She was even taught how to write her own music. Rain Angel had always dreamed of becoming a celebrity. She always remembered her friends and family when she was famous because they had always believed in her. Rain Angel strove for a faraway place, and it became her reality. She always believed that what she wanted to become was her choice. She believed that if you have the strength and determination, you can make your dreams come true. The circus. Wow! A big tent was in the middle of the town's parking lot. We were going to a three-ring circus. I couldn't wait for it to begin. Inside and outside of the tent, toys, balloons, and food were being sold. All of the children were so very excited. Inside the tent, we found good seats so we could see everything. The band started to play loud music, and the ringmaster came out with a big, tall hat on his head. In one ring, there were small animals, dogs, monkeys, and parrots doing tricks. The dogs were dressed in funny clothes, and so were the monkeys. They rode on bicycles, danced, and climbed ladders. There were wild tigers and lions in a big round wire cage. A man with a whip was inside the cage with them. He had them trained to jump through a hoop of fire and to roll over. He even kissed them. He was very brave. During the break in the middle of the circus, funny clowns came out and did silly things. They had happy faces and sad faces. Some had big red noses that honked if you squeezed them. There were rides on elephants too. I didn't go on one because it cost too much money. The last act took up the whole tent. It was the acrobats. They hung from their teeth, their feet, and their necks high up in the air. They also swung high up in the air and flew to each other. It's kind of scary to watch because I was afraid they might fall. I had a very good time at the circus. However, my tummy felt kind of sick from all the cotton candy and junk food I ate. Going to the grocery store. Each week, I go to the grocery store to buy food for my family. I get a shopping cart from the front of the store, and I push the cart all around the store. The cart is large, but when I am finished shopping, the cart is nearly full. The grocery store is also called a supermarket. When I go shopping, I start out in the produce section of the supermarket. The produce section is where the fresh fruits and vegetables are kept. I like to buy different kinds of fruit, such as apples, oranges, and bananas. The vegetables that I often buy are carrots, peas, and corn. I also buy tomatoes when they are bright red in color. I often buy a bag of potatoes. Or a bag of rice. After visiting the produce section, I go to the meat section. Here I buy poultry such as chicken and turkey. I often buy seafood, especially fish. I also buy beef and sometimes pork or lamb. I also visit the dairy section where I can buy milk and cheese. Sometimes I also buy ice cream or yogurt. When I have finished in the meat and dairy sections, I then move to the bakery section. This is where loaves of bread are baked and sold. There are many different kinds of bread in the bakery section. The bakery section also sells pasta, such as macaroni and spaghetti. And of course, you can buy pies, cakes, and cookies in the bakery section. These foods are very sweet and tasty. I also pick up. A few other things at the supermarket, such as soap, toothpaste, and cleaning supplies. But sometimes I forget to buy something that I plan to get. Maybe I should make a list of the things I need to buy. A day at the beach.
When the hot summer weather arrives, many people like to cool off by visiting the beach. Often there is a cool breeze that comes off the water, and of course the water itself is cool and refreshing. One of the favorite activities at the beach is building sandcastles. Children use small shovels and pails to move the sand. They can build small forts and castles by carefully forming and shaping the sand. Building sand castles is a lot of fun, but you shouldn't build them too close to the water. A wave might come and wash your sand castle away. There are also many games that people like to play at the beach. Some people play catch with a small plastic disc called a frisbee. The frisbee glides smoothly through the air. Other people like to play beach volleyball in the soft sand. Some people prefer just to relax on the beach. They like to lie down on a blanket and feel the warm sunshine. I like to sit on the beach with an ice cream cone, but you have to eat it quickly before it melts. Of course, the main attraction of a beach is the water. Many children learn to swim at the beach and enjoy playing in the water. Some people like to swim vigorously. Other people like to relax in the water on an inflatable floating mattress. Other people just wade around in the water as a way to keep cool. When it is a windy day, some people try sports such as surfing. Going to the beach is surely one of the best ways to spend a summer day. Making cookies. Mmm, something smells good. My friend's mom is making cookies. They are chocolate chip, my favorite. I think I'll go home and ask my mom if we can make cookies too. I run all the way home and rush through the door. I yell, "Mom, mom!" She comes out from her bedroom, her eyes wide. "What?" she answers, a little worried. I breathlessly ask if we can please, pretty please, make cookies. She smiles and says, "I guess so." "Yes," I reply. First, mom tells me to get out the cooking stuff, so I get out the mixer and bowl, the measuring cups and spoons, and the cookie sheets. Then she tells me to get out the recipe book. I remind her that the recipe is on the chocolate chip package. Right, she says. Then she asks me to look at the recipe and get out the things we need, like flour, sugar, and butter. We set the oven temperature to 350 degrees Fahrenheit. Then we mix all the flour and other stuff ingredients together. Last, we added the chocolate chips. We drop the batter by big teaspoons full onto the cookie sheets. We set the timer for 12 minutes and just sit back and enjoy the good smell. The buzzer rings. We take the cookies out. Oh, do they look good! We don't even wait for them to cool down. Both mom and I get a big glass of cold milk and two big warm cookies each. Yum yum! Want to join us? Stars in the midnight sky. Twinkle, twinkle, little star, how I wonder what you are, up above the world so high, like a diamond in the sky. Twinkle, twinkle, little star. This is a little poem song I always say when I'm outside and I see the stars. When I see the first star of the night, I always say this one: Starlight, star bright, first star I see tonight. I wish I may, I wish I might have the wish I wish tonight. Do you have a special thing to say about the stars? Stars are beautiful, bright spots in the sky. Stars are usually seen at night when it is dark. We can't see them in the daytime because the sun is so bright, the brightest star of all. I like staying up late just to look at the stars. One time I was outside at midnight, and the stars seemed to sparkle and dance. They really did look like diamonds dancing in the sky. If you watch the stars long enough, you may see a falling star or a shooting star. I have seen both. A falling star is where the star just seems to drop, and it leaves a trail of what appears like stardust. A shooting star is very beautiful. It shoots across the sky, leaving a long trail of colorful stardust. Shooting stars seem to brighten up the whole sky. They usually seem quite close to Earth. Have you ever watched the stars and got the urge to reach out and touch them, or even join them in their secret dance? I wonder what it'd be like to see a star up close.
Would it look like the moon? Maybe one day when I am older, I will go up in a rocket ship and visit the dancing stars in the midnight sky. Music A song comes on the radio. My lips start to move, singing along. My fingers start to snap. My feet begin to tap. The music sinks deep into my soul. I listen to the music as it fills my brain, and I remember when I used to sing. I sang in front of huge crowds. I loved it when they watched me and clapped for me when I was finished. Letting out my feelings when I was sad, mad, happy, or glad was when I would sing. I sang in the shower. I sang in the rain. I sang in church. I sang walking down the street. Music has always been a big part of my life. It seems like I was a baby when I started playing the piano. I would sit on my sister's lap while she played the piano, and I would bang on the keys. I remember sitting beside her and learning how to sing. I sang my little lungs out. As I grew, I listened to other singers on tapes, the radio, and CDs. I took those things that I had heard from different singers and made myself sound like them. Soon I could take what I had heard all my life and make it into my own sound. I have always liked singing jazz and blues. I don't listen to jazz and blues a lot, however. I listen to pop, rock, classical, and some country. As you can see, I like many types of music. I have seen musicals too, like Phantom of the Opera and Les Misérables. Those musicals were amazing. They were such bright costumes and stage sets, not to mention the wonderful songs and singing. Music has been on this earth since the beginning of time, and it touches everyone in a different way. I know it has not only touched mine, but is a big part of my very being. First date. Ring, ring. The phone is ringing. My mother answers it. Hello, she says. It is for me. When I pick up the phone, I hear a boy's voice. It is a boy I go to school with. This boy is very nice, and he is cute too. He asks me if I want to go out for dinner with him tonight. I say yes. He's going to pick me up at 5:30 p.m. in the evening. He has a nice red car. Before he picks me up, I have to find an outfit to wear. I am nervous and don't know what to wear, so my sister picks out an outfit for me. I feel excited and have the sensation of butterflies in my stomach. The inside of my hands are damp too. I put on my outfit and do my hair. My sister gives me some nice clips to put in my hair. Ding dong. The doorbell buzzes. My date is here. I hurry to the door so I can greet him. He tells me that I look nice and that we are going to a place called M.T. Belly's. When we arrive at M.T. Belly's, there is loud music playing. A smiling waitress comes who serves us our food. I order a large Caesar salad. My date orders steak. When it arrives. The food looks and is delicious. The waitress asks us if we want dessert after we finished, but we are too full, so we ask for our bill to pay. My date pays for the meal. I brought money just in case we would share the cost. When we leave the restaurant, we go for a walk by the river. It is a beautiful night. I am enjoying my first date. I am laughing and having fun. It is time for us to go home, so my date takes me home. I smile and thank him for the great time. I hope he'll ask me out again. University. It's time to sign up for school. This year, Natalie is going to Brock University. She has never been to university before. She is a little bit scared. She hopes she meets nice new friends. Natalie stood in line to get her picture taken. The picture was put on a card. The card was her picture ID, identification. She would use this card if she needed to buy books from the school bookstore, if she wanted to get a book from the library, or if she wanted to use the pool. After all of the signing up and money was paid, Natalie went out to lunch with her mother. Mom, I'm kind of scared about going to school. 
I'm going to be the youngest kid there. I don't know how to take notes. The teachers might be mean. Natalie rambled on. Her mom just calmed her down and said, Take one day at a time, Natalie. Worry only about today. Hmm. You're right, Mom. Thanks. Natalie was very scared on the first day of school. She made sure she had all of the books she needed and lots of pens, pencils, and erasers. She walked into the front of the building and went on her way to try and find her classroom. Natalie got through her classes and met a lot of new people, nice people. Her classes seemed to go by really fast, and the day went by even faster. When Natalie got home, she was so excited. She told her mom that classes weren't all that scary. The students and the teachers weren't scary either. Natalie knew that the schoolwork would be hard, but she felt good about the people she had met that day. She knew she'd have a good year.